so continuing from the last topic that we discuss on uh, informal uh, experimental design this was uh, last time we discuss about uh, informal experimental design so uh, today uh, we will continue this uh, experimental research design with uh, some of the formal experimental designs so in this formal experimental design we have uh, completely randomized design we have uh, randomized block design we have uh, latin square design and we have factorial design so basically we will uh, cover up these formal experimental design where you have a systematic way of uh, conducting an experiment to understand the impact of any particular uh, independent uh, variable on the dependent variable so obviously we look at these issues and in in view of your extraneous factors so we always try to understand to what extent we can minimize this extraneous factors so when we talk about this completely randomized design so in this one we can look at that this completely randomized design of research involves two major principles principles of replication and principle of randomization so we try to randomize the experiment as well as we try to replicate that means it is not that you conduct once you conduct more than once so that you can get the overall you know replicated you know twice two or three data for uh, replication of or duplication of the experiment and then you can reach to the closer or very close to the hypothesis or the outcome completely randomized design mainly focus on randomization of the you know uh, sample as well as the randomization of the group so let us uh, take example that if you have uh, some you know population say for example you have a student group on which you want to experiment some uh, two treatment out of 60 class or 30 class if you want to test the effect of a independent variable and effect of b so how you conduct this uh, experiment in form of uh, cr design out of 30 you need to look at the randomly selected sample so that means out of 30 or 60 randomly you choose two students or group of students sample so maybe uh, you randomly choose without any uh, you know way and suppose you choose a and b two students now you randomly assigned experimental group and control group on the spot that means neither a is knowing whether a student is becoming control group or a student is becoming experimental group nor b is knowing so both samples are not knowing which treatment they are going to get so this 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 process is random whether this or this this again is random and given treatment 
and then effect is uh, you know uh, the after treatment the effect is studied and this is the common uh, experiment formal experiment that we do conduct in uh, many cases say for example uh, when we want to test say for example out of 10 pens uh, we want to uh, check the writing quality or uh, you know the build quality so it is not that you start uh, picking up from one corner randomly you choose two and randomly you give two different treatment and you check the effect so it is can completely random design and nobody can say that uh, one uh, area or one uh, sample uh, may have some uh, different uh, characteristic than other but yes in case of uh, in case where there are uh, some extraneous factors say for example you talk about uh, you want to experiment uh, the you know effect of fertilizer two type of fertilizers on uh, you know two type of uh, you know fields altogether you take it randomly that field one and field two and randomly assigned treatment a or treatment b so you don't know which treatment is going to which particular field it is randomly so you can conduct but again the effect of extraneous factor that level of fertility quality of soil or the quality of sheets that may affect but this is, this is very simple design which uh, which is conducted in most of the uh, in a very simple uh, you know manner second time second type of uh, formal experimental design is called rb design previous one cr design randomized block design now look at the case in this one it is uh, you may say that out of 60 student in previous case out of 60 students two st sample two students were selected so in that case if two students were selected so you may say that uh, probability is that uh, one student's iq is uh, you know lower one other student's iq is high this randomized block design is something where the field is bifurcated into blocks say for example out of 50 students 10 students are having very low IQ. 10 students are, are having very, very low I, IQ, then low IQ, then uh, 5 or 6 or 8 or 10 students are having, you know, average IQ. Similarly, this IQ, high IQ and very high IQ. So you make the block of these five different homogeneous groups. Look at it is very important to understand. The all students in very low IQ block are of similar characteristic. Then of low IQ, average IQ, high IQ, a very high IQ. Now out of 10, one student is randomly selected for these four type of experiment or four type of examination or forms four type of forms are uh, a test you can say tests are to be conducted on this whole class one student from this is randomly selected to take on these tests 
one student from low IQ is selected student B and to take on this. Similarly, student C from this. So out of, you know, block of 10, one student is selected to do or to take on these four tests. Likewise this and likewise this. Now, each student is free to change the sequence of taking test 1, test 2, test 3, test 4. Form 1, form 2, form 3, form 4. That means student A can start from form 3. So it is random. Student B can start from form 1. Student C can start from form 4. So students are supposed to randomize this sequence of forms. Right? They are also so that nobody can, uh, you know, convey that form A test 1 was easy. So everybody scored good. Or B student or E student has very high IQ. So he had taken test 1 as a first and low IQ had taken this form 4. It is totally randomized system, randomized process. So anyone can take at any time so that there is no interaction. And this way, if results comes like this, for test A, it may be that very low IQ student secures this marks or high IQ secure this marks. So it, 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 it sometimes try to address the extraneous factor. Maybe that uh, form A was easy, but student A attempted first initially focused more on time and concentration but student E attempted this test one at last at last when he was not having time or he was you know uh, you know a little bit uh, fatigue in the fatigue condition so he could not you know concentrate properly even though having with a high IQ. So this may reduce the extraneous factors to a great extent. And each student is supposed to take on all these. So this is randomized block design means first you distribute into different blocks and then you choose one from each block and then conduct experiment. Looking at this uh, third type of uh, Latin square design of research, where you are you are having uh, more than two variables and more than you know two uh, you know fields or labels. Latin square talk about that it is a no no it is in form of square where each dependent variable and independent variable they are say for example if you want to study the fertility of x one x2 x3 x4 and x5 five type of fertilizers on a field so it is very important to distribute the field into same number of which are the independent variables so if you have five type of you know fertilizer x1 fertilizer x2 x3 x4 x5 
when you divide this field into one block, another block, third block, fourth block, and fifth block. So overall land is divided into five blocks because you need to choose experiment with each one of the fertilizer. Now, how to allot this? Now, each fertilizer will be assigned only one block. Say for example, X1 fertilizer is assigned first block A, represented in green form. So this row, other all other you know blocks, all other blocks would not be having you know C or D or E or you know this type of uh, fertilizer. These are basically, you know, land divided, land division. And you want to experiment with this, uh, with each type of, you know, uh, uh, a kind of, uh, you know, fertilizer. So if you apply a fertilizer on this, so you your a option is exploited that means you cannot apply this a uh, fertilizer a on any other block likewise you apply c fertilizer on second block e fertilizer on third block b fertilizer on uh, this or D fertilizer on fifth block. So five blocks are there and five fields are there. So these fields may be having a different type of you know input or seeds that you plant on this you assign. So if you assign this one so you get a type of fertilizer this type of seed with the second and C type of fertilizer. So this way, the effect of each type of fertilizer can be randomly and systematically be studied on, you know, uh, productivity and it can uh, yield that with a fertilizer, how much yield is there with the different type of you know you know fields and it may be different types of uh, seeds or it may be same type of seeds also so when you conduct this uh, latin square you have you know you have consideration of extra numerous factors fertility level and the quality of seeds and then you try to experiment. The important thing is that the area of this is in a square form. And this is in random. So in this column, only one experiment is possible. In this column, one. In this column, one. In this column, one. Each column and row would have only one unique type of fertilizer which can give you which can give you result in this experiment now if you talk about uh, fourth type of uh, formal experimental design so in this uh, experimental design you can have uh, you know factorial design and factorial designs are used in experiments where effects of varying more than one factor. That means maybe that uh, you have uh, two more than one uh, variable means you have uh, two variables 
two independent variables and two dependent in variables so you can understand that if you have control level and experimental level level 1 and level 2 and you have one experiment a or sorry treatment a and treatment b it means maybe you take fertilizer a and fertilizer b this is very simple factorial design which is 2 by 2 it may be uh, 2 by 3 it may be 3 uh, by 2 so 2 by 3 or 3 uh, by 2 where you are not having varying factor more than 1 then you go for previous uh, research designs but if you have varying factor more than 1 varying factor means you have two uh, fertilizers and you have two labels two different labels so you can say that fertilizer a is given treatment or fertilizer a is applied to label 1 on this particular cell as well as on this particular cell on both the cells that means at the label 1 and at the level 2 and the treatment or fertilizer b treatment b is applied on level a and it will be called as a cell 3 and level 2 it will be called as a cell 4 so these you will get four results different results with respect to different labels likewise if it is 3 by 2 so it may be level 1 level 2 and level 3 so you will get cell 1 cell 2 and cell 3 and cell 4 or cell 5 cell 6 so you will get 3 by 2 means 6 cells and 6 results out of which 3 would be of uh, one treatment a means maybe uh, fertilizer a and 3 would be of treatment b so when you have more than one varying uh, factor say for example uh, this uh, this would become uh, you know i am i'm not able to uh, use it uh, white board to make you uh, very clear with the you know writing like class and chalk and board but i'll try to uh, look at say for example uh, if you have uh, two fertilizers and two lands so you will get uh, four you know factors four result so to understand that level 1 means field 1 result you can take the mean of each one or if you want to understand the fertilizer once result overall result so you can take mean of this these two cells or if you want to take level means field you can take cell 1 and cell 3 uh, at the same time and then you can uh, understand so you have varying factor if you are trying to uh, understand from uh, field point of view then you are row become important and if you want to study from you know treatment uh, point of view then your column become important so this way you can understand that if you want to study the effect of this fertilizer one so one field second field maybe that some yield come here some yield come here take average you can understand that fertilizer a might be having the effect of this much on an average which may be giving you some result which may you know uh, help you in accepting hypothesis or rejecting hypothesis then uh, there comes uh, another uh, form of uh, factorial design 
which is called complex factorial design now complex factorial design where you do not have two treatments you have more than two treatments and you have more than two experiments so when you have more than two treatment and you have more than uh, you know two control variables then you apply complex factorial design to make you learn the complex factorial design we will try to make it in offline because it requires so much of you know uh, uh, explanation with examples so uh, maybe that uh, factorial design we uh, again uh, take into your uh, tutorial class which will help you to understand in a very detailed manner so this is all about for today's session we will uh, extend this particular session in offline to make you learn about these uh, formal uh, experimental design especially factorial designs into tutorial class so that you can have a better you know understanding of these uh, methods so this is all about for today's session